In this video, we're demonstrating a repair of the pronius longus and the pronius brevis tendons that course behind the ankle. So this is a 52-year-old patient that has sustained an injury to these tendons, and the MRI demonstrated both a longus tendon as well as a brevis tendon rupture. Now, there was a partial rupture of the longus noted on the MRI and some longitudinal tearing of the brevis tendon, but intraoperatively, we found a complete rupture of the longus and an almost 90% rupture of the brevis. There you can see the longus tendon. It's completely ruptured. We're um, resecting it and pulling it back from its rupture site. Now, one of the techniques that I'll teach my students as well as residents, when we're doing surgical dissection, an easy way to remember which tendon you're encountering is, you'll normally find the longus first and then the brevis is tucked up against the fibula. And I always remember B for brevis against bone. So now you can see we're dissecting that longus tendon, pulling it backwards, and we're going to now dissect down to find the brevis tendon. If you look closely here, it is almost completely ruptured as well. As we dissect in and identify, you're going to see a portion of fibers connecting the more proximal end of the brevis tendon to the more distal end. And as you can see, once we expose it here, it is almost completely ruptured. So it's 90% rupture. So how do we repair something like this? Well, we're going to do two things. We're going to um, tubularize the tendon that is the longest because if you were to hold that tendon and feel it and palpate it, there are two large portions of what we would refer to as mucoid degeneration within the tendon. And that's two large bulbous structures. So we're going to internally cut them out, as you can see we'll do here shortly and tubularize that tendon. But right now we're still working on dissecting in, finding that brevis tendon, pulling it out. And you can see here this complete rupture of those fibers. There's a small portion of the brevis tendon connecting to itself. And that's what we're showing here. And that's a small portion. Watch when we pull this out, you'll see there's only a small fiber connecting that proximal stump to the distal stump of the brevis tendon. So we're showing, we're going to dissect down, make sure it's healthy where it inserts onto the fifth metatarsal um, tuberosity. And that's what we're doing here. Just extending our incision. We want to make sure that there are no distal ruptures to where that tendon inserts onto the metatarsal bone. And there are not looked pretty healthy. So then what we're going to do is go back and work on our longest tendon and we're making a longitudinal incision into that longus tendon and within the tendon there is two portions of large bulbous like tissue and we're going to excise those and you'll normally excise those from the internal most portion of the tendon and that's what we're doing here we're debulking it we're tubularizing it and then we're going to wrap suture around it to make it one nice straight tendon and you can see here as we were dissecting around it we found the os perineum which is a bone encapsulated within that tendon and that was the cul culprit of this rupture so that small bone eventually caused inflammatory changes to the tendon and that is what caused this tendon to rupture so you can see we dissected it out there we took the bony fragment completely out of the tendon and you can see we'll zoom in here as we're cutting it out and that is a piece of bone that was inside of the tendon and not like a large piece of bone that's floating around. So if you were to take an x-ray, it would look like it's floating. It's not. It's actually within the tendon. It's held in place by those tendon fibers. So that's what you can see. We dissected it out there, and that's called an os perineum. And there's not much to do with it. We'll just discard that, and we'll tubularize that tendon. And then the next step, once we were dissecting deep within the area of the heel bone, there's a tubercle there called the perineal tubercle. Now, this is an anecdotal claim, but usually in patients that have these ruptures, they'll have a sharp perineal tubercle on the calcaneus or the heel bone. And you can see we're using Ron Jores, and we're going in there and removing that large bony prominence that caused this. And then we're going to do an end-to-end -end repair of what we can, as best we can, to our brevis tendon. So, you, you can see we took that distal most stump of the brevis and we're attaching it to some of those fibers that are in place from our 
proximal end of the brevis tendon. We're going to sew those two ends together as best as we can. And then we're going to anastomose or connect our longest tendon to our brevis tendon. So basically, in essence, what we're doing here is taking two ruptured tendons and we're putting them together and creating one large, stronger tendon. This is called a tenodesis or an anastomosis of two tendons. And the goal here is to make them one strong tendon. So the next step in this process is we're wrapping a graft around those tendons. That's what we're doing here. This is called an arthroflex graft. And this is actually dermal tissue from the lumbar area on a patient's back. This was a donor graft that is um, harvested and these are fresh frozen grafts that are prepared and we will just order them ahead of time and those get wrapped around the tendon. Now, what's fascinating about these arthroflex grafts are they incorporate into the body and become strong tissue. And I've actually had the opportunity to go inside of a patient that had um, subsequently developed an infection that was in an Achilles tendon after a repair of one of these and it was unrelated to the graft. The patient um, was in a situation where they were prone to infections. The repair went well, but she developed a secondary infection. And we went in, we were able to see that graft and it was extremely strong. It was hard to dissect out and pull away from our tendons. So it's fascinating to see how strong these grafts are later and they, how they incorporate into the tendon. So that's what we're doing here. We're repairing and after our anastomosis has been performed, we are wrapping that arthroflex around the tendon. We're using some 3 fiber wire, which is a non-absorbable strong suture to repair that tendon. That is it. This patient's back to normal. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below.